Hey guys, this is Barking Madly. Um, if you're not interested in archery or you're not interested in techie number nerdy bull bullshit, this is probably going to be something you want to skip. Um, anyhow, this is going on about, I was, we were talk, having a little chat about uh, how you zero your bow and how you can have it zeroed for both 10 yards and 20 yards. And this guy right here is it's Sean from archerytalk.com. I'll put a link to this specific video below in the in the you know in the description here. But uh, he mentions using a uh, piece of paper with a one half inch piece of electrical tape that he uses for tar for setting up the targets. Now overall, everything in here makes a lot of sense, except for the fact that when he talks about having a bow set up for both 10 and 20 yards. Um, also, just another thing here. There's another guy. This is Ike's Outdoors. I'll put a link to him as well. He's got a really good series on paper on setting up your bow and tuning it and whatnot. And one other thing I wanted to mention is he actually mentions another link and how he learned all of this stuff. Ah, where'd it go? And this is the Easton Arrow Tuning Maintenance and Maintenance Guide. I'll put a link to all three of these things in there so you can take a look and maybe you already know them, maybe you don't. But anyway, okay, here comes the real nerdy techie number part. Uh, my friends on my some some of the other forums that I mess around with know me as making spreadsheets on everything and turns out I can make it make one even on bow shooting. Okay. Quick thing, all I'm trying all I'm explaining here is why it doesn't why it uh, at least from a gut reaction doesn't make sense how you could be uh, aligned at both 10 yards and 20 yards. Okay. Starting off here, um, like I said, this would probably be better. I'll see if I can bump this up a bit. This is probably better if you have high def. Um, Let's see, I'll zoom in a little bit. Maybe that'll help also. Okay. Just for giggles, I'm assuming I'm shooting at 250 feet per second. Um, then using all that, I can calculate the time of flight, which is the distance divided by the, in the, the, divided by the speed. We're going to use gravity here, which is 32 feet per second per second. And here's a little calculation. It's uh, the rate of drop. It's simple ex acceleration. This is high school physics. No complex math. It's one half times acceleration times time squared. Or if you do the math, it's 16 times time times time, where time is the time of flight. Okay, 250 feet per second, we've got three different distances. We have three different, uh, you know, both in yards and in feet. If you do this math, works out at, at if you assume no slowing down for air resistance or anything like that, uh, the arrow takes 0.12 seconds to go 10 yards, 0.18 to go 15, and 0.24 seconds, a quarter second to go 20 yards. Now, taking this equation, here's the numbers you get, and uh, the drop you get is a quarter foot, half a foot, and almost you know nine tenths of a foot, or in inches, two and three quarter inches, six and a quarter inches, and 11 inches flat. Now, if you shoot a bow normally, you know, or horizontally, it's going to follow a trajectory down. And if this red line here is uh, what your bows are is a horizontal line. Now, yeah, it makes sense that if you arc, you know, generally you're going to shoot your bow up and shoot it down, and if you know anything about rifles, they do the same thing. That's why you can actually have, if you have your, you know, depending on how you have your thing sighted in, you can actually hit, you know, you'll have a, depending on how you've got your, uh, what do you call it, your scope height above your, uh, your bore, rifle bore, you can change things a lot. Well, this can do the same thing. So it's conceivable you could have the cross over here at 10 yards and cross over here at 20 yards. It's conceivable, but it just doesn't make sense. Now I know, uh, Lamb Dog, you were saying, well, maybe the speed makes a difference. Well, okay, here's 250 feet per second. Here's the same math done at 330 feet per second, which that's a pretty damn fast bow. That's, my assassin will do it at 70 pounds and 30 inches draw. Um, Okay, for the 250 feet, we had two and, a, two and three quarter all the way up to 11 inches. For 330, it gets smaller, but you've got an inch and a half all the way up to six and a half, almost or six and a third inches. Um, that's still a big amount of drop, and that's going to be, you know, six inches is that big. Um, I would think at 20 yards, your uh, group group size should, you know, would be better, would be smaller than that so that you'd have two distinct um, not overlapping now realistically if you're shooting at 10 or 20 yards I think both of them would be a kill shot now just for giggles I put just so that you can get an idea that the math is correct this is the same exact math in fact if anybody wants to I can even email you the uh, you know 
camera, you can't really see it because I've got it on full screen, but these are all calculations and I can actually send you the spreadsheet that shows you the calculations I did. But this is using a 3,000 foot per rifle, 3,000 feet per second bullet leaving a rifle. Again, this is assuming no air resistance so the bullet just flies. But from 10 yards all the way out to 1,000 yards. And if you look at that, you know, in feet, or if you look at it in inches, at 10 yards you have basically 19 thousandths of an inch drop. But you get out to 1,000 yards, you've got 192 inches of drop. You know, and it, you know, 100 yards, it's an inch and you know, almost two inches. Then at 500 yards, it's at 48 inches. Now, if you look at any uh, ballistics program, those are those numbers are going to be way off simply because of the fact that the bullet does have air resistance and different bullets will travel different. Yada yada yada. But at any rate, just to show you that the math is in the ballpark and in a perfect physics world, if you're shooting your bow on the moon or something like that. Anyway. That's why, you know, I'm just a little uh, a little concerned about that, you know, he's saying, oh, you can shoot it at 10 yards and 20 yards and it'll be the same. Now, clearly, he's been doing it for a while, and by he, I mean, uh, where's the guy? By he, I mean Sean over at uh, Arrow Talk, or Archery Talk. But uh, that's why I'm just saying it, it just seems kind of weird to me. Um, the other reason I'm, you know, it should be obvious that you can get your bow to do this, but after reading through all of the stuff on this air, on this arrow maintenance and tuning guide, it starts talking about too much flex, too little flex, um, how to go to a stiffer or a stiffer arrow, how to go to a better string, and this, that, and I mean, this goes into a lot of detail. Um, you know, like I said, I'll put the link in there, but it shows you know if your arrows are doing you know uh, broadheads versus field tips. You know how you need to adjust it. Um, if you look at the angle your arrows are going into the target, you know, fletched versus unfletched, talks about fishtailing, porpoising, and all this other stuff, and how you need to change the knock height. Change, you know, I mean, it just getting your bow to do this and having the sight adjusted for everything else just it just leads me to believe that's a little confusing. So anyway, sorry for the long techie yada yada yada, but that's what I'm good at. Anyhow, later guys.